Hello and welcome to Scrapbooking Station. In this video we're working with ribbons. So it doesn't matter whether you keep them on your spools, you've got them in a box, you put them on project cards, you can use them. This is a hit and never miss creative challenge because you can do things with backgrounds and borders and frames on cards and on scrapbook pages. So I'm going to put the camera over my shoulder and we're going to get started. Okay, this is the first of my videos where I'm going to get right to the punchline. And the punchline is using your scraps of ribbon or even full length ribbons to make backgrounds. So I've got a card background and I'm just using an, an Avery uh, single sided adhesive sheet which I cut to size. I peeled this off and then I just started placing ribbon. I did secure it onto my grid paper with just a couple of glue dots because I can know I know I can pick them up and then I started finding pieces of ribbon that will work with me so I've got my little card box I've got some teals I've got blacks I got black sparkles I've got velvet and so all I'm gonna do now is take this over well first off this is not the most secure adhesive and we're gonna look at some others but I'm going to trim this off. I'm going to save all those nibbles because I can do things with those nibbles as well. Okay, I'm going to show you this first piece. And if I need to color those whites, I will. And actually, that is the plan to color these whites. I don't know if I've got the right colors here. But I will play with that and I'll be back. Okay, I'm going to create one more background. And that's because I want to use a different adhesive. This is a Sizzix permanent adhesive sheet. It's really not a sheet. It's really just kind of uh, glue on the back. So it cuts to the same size. Don't need to go 90 degrees. And the other thing I'm introducing here is some cardstock. And the only thing you want to do is make sure that you're making the most of it. I'm just going to come from a corner to corner. And actually, once I get here, I really don't need the... Um, grit sheet at all. Now I'm just going to start layering my ribbon and again I'm using a turquoise silver and black motif. So I'm going to come back with this finished piece. It does stick much more nicely than the Avery and I'll give credit for that. Okay once I get here I've got two panels. So this first one was just an Avery sheet. I did have to add actually quite a bit of glue. I'm going to frame it so I'm not all that worried about the edges and I just trimmed it with my paper snips. Of course all my whites I colored with my taken with teal or turquoise color stamp and write marker. Over here much easier and I, I meant to say that I peeled off that layer onto a piece of black cardstock and this way because it's not a sheet. They call it an adhesive sheet but it's really not a sheet. You need to bag it with something. And then, of course, added my card stock. Didn't have to ink anything. And then I just took it with a straight edge and my Ulfa cutter and trimmed off the pieces. I am going to save pieces later on. I don't think I need these pieces. Anyway, I will be back with the finished cards. Okay, this is the first finished project. So I took the background on the Avery sheet and put it on my card front and I'm going to talk about the interior first in a little bit but so I've got my stripes they're very textural so I've got velvets I've got uh, silvers ink uh, packaging all that kind of good stuff my subscribers know that I just don't layer so I've got a piece of specialty silver linen paper and so I cut the frame I'm going to save this for something else in the case of my teal velvet, you know what? I extended it a little bit in. I'm going to save this for something else. And even just the black base, because this is a really thick cardstock, I'm going to save that for something else. And actually, if I were to pile these on top of these other, I've got another front. So let's open this, because this is kind of interesting. Um, this is actually the piece of uh, foiled and very thick cardstock, foiled pattern cardstock. Um, here's another piece, and but the problem is this is single sided, so this makes a great interior. Of course, I'm working on black, and so I got a piece of colored vellum, vellum, um, some dazzle stickers here. I've got dazzle stickers here. 
eyes put another piece of like a brilliant blue and then some of these and that is re ready to go okay the other base you know what I wanted to show more of it so you can see where where I'm liking this I just took strips of that specialty paper did it here here I've got a salutation raised up I've got another die cut here and of course when you're using ribbon you've got ready-made um, embellishment or at least a little accent for your cards on the inside again actually it opens this way and I chose to outline with dazzle stickers this is another die cut that comes with this this is midnight silhouettes and of course always when I'm using specialty paper I'm going to save this for something else. So let's get right into the next project with the scrap of border. As I get into this, I need a border. I need one half inch strip. So I just cut a four and a half by, I think this is about uh, 10 inches. And that's going to do me more than enough. There's a couple things I want to talk about. Uh, the first is, if you've got wide ribbon, this is the wide ribbon I've used. This is a... Uh, kind of sateen, very shiny, but you can cut it into strips. So this is the leftover of that piece. I want to use a piece here. Same thing goes with your paper twine cording. Um, this is actually a lot larger. Uh, let's see, I don't think I even used a whole piece of it, but it's about two inches, more than two inches unfurled. So kind of strip that and include it. And the other thing I want to talk about, <coughs> excuse me, is stretchy ribbon probably not really great to use in this technique so I place this on my grid sheet as a whole piece and put my ribbons across I'm probably gonna actually end up peeling off that stretchy ribbon because I don't like it I tried gluing it and everything else something to live and learn by and so now I'm going to go ahead and peel off the back uh, another thing to live and learn by I used my Sizzix sheet and I should not have used that because as I peel this off this is again not really a sheet and so what I'm probably going to be end up with is a lot of singular strips and I'm going to work with that but the next project I'm going to show you we won't have to let me see what happens okay so you can see as I'm peeling this back it's a little bit filmy it's probably not going to stay together I'm going to get this onto my layout and I'm going to show you this border. Okay, so here is a two page layout and here's where I've used my one and a half inch ribbon strips. Like I said, I kind of built them all together. If I had used a better adhesive, this would have been a little bit less persnickety. But you can see each one of these pieces kind of came off independently. And this stretchy stuff, again, not so great, but after I started peeling some of this off, because I had to pull each one off and place them, it actually kind of worked for me because I could change the uh, patterns up on the sides. And so these are this two. I've already got my photos um, matted, which I'm going to use with this layout. It is going to be a walkabout in my yard. It's going to be something about magic. And so I'm going to have this, and I am not going to finish this layout because I am going to do some technique with embossing powders and acetate. Um, acetate overlays is what I'm going to call it, so keep an eye out for that and I will finish that up. Now, okay, not my favorite uh, double-sided adhesive, but I am going to do another project, so let me move this out of the way. And I just wanted to add, if I, if I knew, um, I was not going to have any lacy type ribbons. And if I knew, I could I could have put that same adhesive, the Sizzix double-sided adhesive, onto a piece of cardstock and just placed the whole thing. And that would have worked as well. But when you've got lacy ribbons, not so much so. But this stuff is great. Um, well, first off, you could put a strip of it. This is a thin strip, and if you've never thought about framing your photographs, this is a two-page layout. This is actually I build it as one page. Then you just need to peel this off, and you've got this great layer. I'm going to show it. Of sticky, flip it over, and place it on your layout. So I'm going to do that. In fact, I want this corner 
my right side corner up and I come across. I love peel and stick. And I actually want to pick this one up and tuck it under there. If I need to add a little spot of glue. The other great thing, of course, um, when you've got double sided adhesive, I actually have got little corners back behind here. So you don't have to worry about uh, covering up when you're using vellum. Wait, right, let me cut that up. I'll leave you some photographs of that as well as as far as I've gotten with this layout. And then we're going to look at the next piece because we're going to switch adhesives. Okay, this next adhesive I'm going to use is a, actually transparent self adhesive foil. They do refer to it as film in the back, but the great thing about this, and I'm just going to go ahead and waste a piece because I use this for inlays all the time. This is great for doing your ribbons, especially if you're using lacy ribbons, which is the first thing I'm going to do in my project. Yeah, so if I were to stick something on there, and however many pieces I want it, let me just, just need to kind of peel off the back layer. And I just grabbed a darker piece because what happens, I peeled off the top layer, and when you peel off the other layer, you've actually got a film. And this film will hold together, like I said, however many pieces. So this is what we're going to play with from now on. But like I said, the other adhesives in a pinch always work well. So let me get on setting up for the next project and I'll be okay, back. Here's the strip border we're going to be making. I've only got one more strip to go. And so I'm going to show you how I created this piece, this piece, and this piece. And we're going to create the fourth piece here. But that, if you can see, this adhesive, double sided adhesive sheet, actually has a sheen to it, which works really well with photographs, because photographs have a sheen as well. Maybe not so much on your cards. So first off, I've cut three quarters of an inch uh, by seven, and that's going to be the length of my finished strip. When I cut my pieces of ribbon, this is from Stamping Up, it's the new cucumber dotted lace trim. And then I've got a piece of vanilla. Um, this is, let me see what this is. This is very vanilla. And it's got a little bit of shine to it. And I just inked it with, in this case, my strawberry slush. So I've done that. I've done that. The only thing I need to do is peel off this grid piece. So now this is going to be what I'm going to use onto my scrubber page. And so I'm going to position it. I really don't care because when I grab this, I cut it a little bit longer as I did with all my pieces. I just want to come across that top edge and I'm leaving about an eighth of an inch. Although as I put this on and I um, attach the green, a little more room would have been a little better. Since I am covering these edges with corners, I'm sure that's going to stay. Let me see where I am with my camera. So that's good. Okay, I'm going to move in a little bit. Because as I position this green piece, I want to be right across that top edge. I don't care what's going on at the bottom. And I don't care on my scrapbook page what's going on at the bottom. Because this three quarters of an inch is, is going to be more than enough. So I am watching that top edge. I'm positioning along here. Okay, so now I've got that on there. It's stuck on there really good. And actually the other thing, this is like a um, seam binding. But there's no stickiness coming through the top. There's just enough netting in there. So that's something to keep in mind also. If you had larger holes, you might have an issue. And since this paper is the size I need, I'm just going to follow that as my template. You know what, I'm going to grab my paper snaps because they are sugar. Cut along that edge. And throw those nibbles away and cut across the other edge. Okay, I've already pulled off that corner, but you're going to see when I pull off this whole piece, there is like this strip behind it. And that makes life really simple. So much nicer than glue because it actually kind of stiffens up your ribbon as well. And now... I'm going to come across this way. Like I said, I've got more than enough. I just want to go end to end because I know my corner is going to be covered. 
I'm going to stick that on there. And then I'm going to catch my other two strawberries. And I'll be back with this page. And I also did um, a border on the right side companion page. And I'll be back up okay, a little bit. So here's my first page. Actually, if I want to slide some things in there, I still got room to do that. I've got two more strawberries for my corner. And that's how that looks. And I've already finished the right side companion page. And so I've got these two guys. I just did a little bit fetter piece here. Ooh. Didn't press that down quite good enough. Make sure I get that down there really good. I actually backed it with some pattern paper. But really pretty. Okay, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to try and duplicate. This is something from Split Photos and Focals. But I'm going to duplicate this background using ribbons. So again, I'm going to take a piece of this full size, and then once I get my ribbons on there, slice it. So let me set up for that, and I'll be back. In this project, this is the background I'm trying to replicate. This is from Split Base Photos, like I said. And all I've done is taken some yellows, and actually I've got one piece of paper in here. These are all my blues, and these are ribbons, and these are all my sand colors. And so you can see where I've kind of changed up the colors a little bit. This is a piece of, and I did take it down, but the same adhesive. So I'm extending all over the place. I'm going to cut this, trim this, and I'm going to split it to one and a half inch, inch pieces. Um, the only thing I've done here is I've added some of this uh, glittery filament kind of uh, ribbon. So I've got that right in here. I'm hoping it holds together, but you know what? It is so pretty that I'm going to add some glue if I need to. So let me cut this. I'm going to split it into my three sections. I've already got my sailboat. I have got somewhere a lighthouse. Um, still in, I think on chocolate chip this time, but I've already made my cardstock. And this time I'm switching from my Lost Lagoon color to a textured uh, crushed curry. And that's going to be really pretty. And on the inside, so I've made some strips course extending out as much as I need to be it kind of goes wider and I'm going to add some ribbon in here as well so let me slice that attach these pieces and I'll be back but when I saw this because I want to talk about that everything has been straight across and I love straight across but I was thinking oh my gosh how fun oh and there's my lighthouse let me just that's going to be Popped on there. Okay, I got that. That's good. And now I'm going to do a focal for a notebook. Because if you're not thinking about Christmas, now you should. I've already backed it with some Trailblazer paper. And this is a uh, college lined composition notebook. I think I got it for 40 cents when I was shopping during school days. I don't have school days children, but I think my kids love notebooks. So again, just kind of topped it with that and now I'm going to make my focal and this is too much fun. Let me back out a little bit. Oops, not back out, move in. So I decided I'm starting going to mix the skyline. So I've got some of my Lost Lagoon ribbons. I've got some yellows. i got some Hello Honeys. When I got to the mountains I decided to use some gray ribbon and this time I did the strips it's just like I did on our home or our house page so I got those so I can stick them and I can clip them however much I needed I made these mountains I used uh, some other specialty paper to just do the tips on this I've got another specialty ribbon it kind of looks like this and it smushes right on to again I'm using that double sided film so I cut it to size of my focal I've got some old olive. I've got some always artichoke. And then what I've done is taken some of my tool in different colors. I know it's going to be see-through, but when, you know what, I place it on this background, it's going to be just magnificent. I added a die cut. In this case, I've got a tree. These are just D's distinctively. 
and I only got the one tree. It's wider, and if you want to clip off branches, you can have a narrower tree. So I try and save. Um, I might add some of these greens, and so this is another these distinctively to go with it. Uh, tree branches, and anyway, so I'm going to trim this up. I'm going to trim that other uh, other background up and cut it and finish it. Cut it and finish it, and now I'm going to move into my last project. Okay, I had to come back and show this one little segment because once you make these panels and you split them, well the great thing is of course that you've got three panels at the same time. But again, this uh, double sided adhesive works great and I'm just going to position it right in between these. I'm just eyeballing because it's going to be so pretty and then of course I've got my embossed die cuts to put on top. So I'll be back with this finished piece. So pretty. And again, three panels made all at once, then split, and then placed. Okay, so let me show you these two finished cards. And so what a great way to take a card design that you love. And this is one that I love. I've got a lighthouse. I've got boats. I've got birds. And I've got a salutation. But well, what a great way to make it kind of over and above. So split them. I decided not to split them equally so I could have a cross over here, a cross over here. Uh, watch that split base photos and then on the inside really pretty and of course if you've got ribbon for your backing you've got an automatic embellishment for your interior. So anyway really pretty. I did make an envelope and I marked it with or I stamped it with a uh, Blend Abilities by Spectrum Noir, any alcohol-based marker, and this way this will go through the mail really nicely. Of course, I lined it as well. And this is that double-sided tape, new from Stamping Up, and I love it to seal envelopes because now it's just peel and stick. So this will get tucked in there, really pretty. Uh, the cover for my notebook, very nice also. Like I said, a little bit more artistic. I ended up edging it with a wood grain embossing folder strips. Then I did this. This is some specialty paper uh, long ago. And then just highlighted it with a compass and a little adventure. And of course, again, a ribbon left over from my inside. And so that is ready to be wrapped for Christmas. And I want to show you the last piece. And so I'll be back All with that. Alright, for this last project. I'm taking everything with me that I've done in the previous projects. So the first thing is, I need a 7.5 by 7.5 inch square. And this is going to go on 8 by 8 page. This is going to be of my newest nephew. And this is a really large photo and I think this background is going to be so pretty. I'm going to have to shrink this down a bit. But this is the guy that I want to highlight. And first thing I'm going to do is put some of my liquid glue, this is Tombow liquid glue, and if you just plop some dots and let them set, they're going to be tacky but not totally sticky because I want this on my grid paper. The other thing is, I know, I found a design that uses uh, little squares of patterned papers. And what I've done is I've ordered some lullaby, and this is why I always put that quick link to my clearance uh, sign on stamping up because this 1095 paper is like four dollars and fifty cents right now and so that is going to be my companion page these are going to be my colors like oh 439 on clearance right now used to be 1095 and that's how I get my pattern papers from stamping up so I am going to flip this over and take it on and then peel off that later. I'm going to start adding ribbon. Okay, as I finished up this last project, you saw where I had the whole strip. I decided to go ahead and split it up and just maneuver things around. I bordered it and I'm going to wait because I am waiting for my lullaby papers so I can make a two page layout of my nephew. I was there for a visit and so I've got a lot of photos. Um, Watch out for, I think it's going to be called baby layouts, because I've got a lot to do with that. Anyway, I hope you took something with you. Like I said, uh, redesign a 
an old a favorite card layout or if you're getting into Christmas uh, do that as well and of course I had the scrapbook borders and card backgrounds anyway I hope you took something with you that you can use in your own paper crafts thank you for watching